You're not a chef, but maybe you like to dabble in cooking. The problem is, it gets expensive. You try to make more than one thing, and your grocery list just starts to add up. The next thing you know, you're left with a lot of random foods and some spices that maybe you're not going to use for another year. Well, on This Week in Being Millennialish, we've got you covered. We're going to teach you how to make two different things that can be used for three different meals. Say what? I'm here at the fabulous Tapas restaurant downtown in New York City, Acasa Fox, with owner Malisa Fox. Thanks so much for joining us. So I thought the best thing to sort of show all of you guys to do today would be an empanada. Empanadas are a, a pastry dough stuffed with just about anything your imagination can provide. For you guys out there that want to cook something in five minutes, maybe store it in the freezer for later, this is your perfect canvas. And because you can pretty much do anything you want with them. So breakfast, lunch, or dinner, you can use Snack. empanadas. You could do it for just about anything. You could even do it cocktail size for if you have parties. You can make a bunch of these, Okay. store them in your freezer, and then they go smack right in the oven from the freezer for 15 minutes. And empanada dough, does it come, can so, you buy a pre-made? You can. So we make our dough here, but for you guys, I, I, you know, the best thing to do is in any freezer section, in any supermarket, okay. you'll find empanada discs or empanada dough. I like to make it a little more interesting, so I okay. will season my dough. Season my dough means I will add salt and spices and seasoning to the outside of the dough, roll it in, Thin out this dough a little bit because it's a little thick for my taste. Okay. And then we'll stop it. Today I thought, okay, the easiest inside for an empanada is grated cheese. This is just a very simple white cheese. You could use any cheese you want. Okay. I just here have a very easy salt All right. mixture that I make here in the restaurant that you guys can make at home. It's a mixture of salt, oregano, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder. Okay. It just adds a little more flavor. So I'm just gonna sprinkle it over the top. Use my hands, which you've all We've washed. all washed. I'm gonna roll it out. I'm gonna let you do it. You're just gonna all right. roll it out for me. Okay. Thin out the dough, make sure the seasonings get in. Do we want put it to be even? Pressure. It should be. Okay. It makes it a little easier. Um, so I'm gonna put the seasoning side on the outside. Okay. All right. So that we know that it's seasoned. And basically what I do is I use a different herb with a different color so I can tell what's on the inside. So I color code. Nice. So if you're making breakfast, lunch, and dinner ones, you could actually color code them yes. and or do it all at the same time. Or dessert versus savory. So here we are. This is our cheese. This is queso blanco, which is a very mild white cheese. With a tablespoon in my hand, I put one and a half in the middle of my dough. Okay. You can do your own right there. I'm going to demonstrate okay. and you make. Okay. That's all right. the best way to learn is just to do it yourself. Sometimes you need a little water to help. To seal it? it. Yep. Almost like a glue. Okay. A little bit. Take your, your forefinger. It's like an art class. It is like an art class. And, and well, there you go. This is our <laughs> canvas. Empanada dough. Take your top half, you're gonna fold it over. Okay. You're gonna have a fork here. Do I seal it? Do I put more water on the outside or no? Nope. Okay. So, very yeah, you're gonna Oh yeah, hold the edges. Hold right? the edges together. And you wanna manipulate the dough with your hands so that they fit, so they look pretty. I'm all about the aesthetics of food. So it can't just be delicious, it, it has, has to, to look pretty as well. We're using our thumb to keep the insides in and our last four fingers to pull all up right. the dough to make sure it's all even. Beautiful, I'll turn it over and do okay. the same. I'm going around rather quickly, but I'm, I'm, I'm repeating and I'm holding on to the shape of the empanada like this so that nothing falls out. I'm gonna turn it over, do the same exact thing like Leslie's doing right here, beautiful okay. by the way, if I may say so myself. I'm gonna turn it back, so I'm doing it three times. Oh, so do it another time? Yes. Okay, so you don't need any equipment for this. You basically you really don't just need any equipment. you need a roller, maybe, um, and depending on and how thick the dough have is. If you a roller, you could find a, a, a can, you know, a can of beans. Oh, nice. A can of fruit, whatever. And just can roll around it. Have. You just roll around it. And then a fork, which yep. everyone and should then have when a you fork. Tap the top of the fork, at the top of the pastry, you want to tap your fork in. Okay. That will release the pressure just a little. And this is Voila. our first one: cheese. We're going right. to do one more of the ground beef. So I want okay. you guys to see how easy this is. This is literally a pound of hamburger meat, again, that you can buy in the market, sauteed in a pan with a little olive oil, sauteed onion. You just cook that for about four or five minutes. But whatever minutes. you have, it could whatever. be any left. Roll this out. Since I had it in my hand, I'll roll it for you. All Remember, right, we're gonna flip turn it, over. it over. Here we are, ground beef. I'm going to take a tablespoon for myself and a half. 
Yeah. And you'll take a tablespoon. Yep. And your beef is cooked, so it's anything cooked. you want to do, you want to cook it before, you right? Except for like strawberries or bananas, you would just any any basically any savory has got to be cooked. Okay. Even if it's just a vegetable. Okay. This is going to go into the oven for about ten minutes only. Okay. So nothing's going to get cooked. Uh -huh. Here we go. So okay. We're going to we're going to fold it over. I've got All my right. thumb on the inside okay. to hold it. All right. And I'm going around very quickly. Get the edges done. I'm going to do it three times just to really make sure. Okay. Then I will shape it. Then you're going to take your fingers and just press the ends okay. so that it gets sealed. Really nicely sealed. Ta -da. All right. Ta -da. Great. Here they are. Now we're just pulling it out of the oven. Awesome. We'll so let's it try it. Like. Yeah. Amazing. It's going to be very hot. So you want, but you get the honor of eating Trying that. it. All right. We brought in our official taste tester to see how our empanada is. You ready to try this? Take a little bite of the edge. Yum. What do you think? Oh, okay. good. Okay, my turn? Your turn. All right, let's see. Mmm. Very good. So the second thing we're gonna make is a vinaigrette. Tell us the different ways that we can use a vinaigrette aside from just salad. Marinating meat is a great way. Vinaigrette can marinate fish or meat before you put it in the oven. However you choose to cook, whether it's fish, meat, or even vegetables. You can okay. marinate any of that. Um, if you want to use it as a dip, you make a nice vinaigrette, add a little bit of mayonnaise oh, or a bit of mustard, um, thicken it up, and then you could use it as a dipping for crudite oh, or nice. roots, vegetables, which is lovely. All so right. here we have just a very simple olive oil. You could choose to use virgin olive oil, but it's a much heavier, stronger flavor. Oil, which you can add it very simply. This here is a cider vinegar. It's an apple cider vinegar. The ratio is going to be one to two. So two olive oils to one whatever the portion vinaigrette is yeah okay. and you'll you'll notice it as you blend it because it will emulsify and become a dressing which you'll see so i'm pouring out my cider vinaigrette this here is my worcestershire sauce which most people use as you can tell yeah for like steaks. Pungent, yeah for steaks mm -hmm. so this adds a heartiness to it so i'm adding a tablespoon of my worcestershire which is my secret secret ingredient i have here a clove and a half of garlic which we're gonna mash. I'm using my hands again, the best tool so that we have. Just mixing it. I'm going to take my good trusty whisk. So this is just the oil, the this is the oil, the vinegar, and the Worcestershire. Okay. You can see it's changed color yeah. completely because the It's like oil a light brown. Has, I'm gonna add my garlic So you didn't cloves. even break them up into small pieces, it's just to soak into the flavor? Yes. Okay. You want the flavor of the garlic to be absorbed by um, olive oil there. Okay. This is dry thyme. You can use any herb. You can use fresh herbs, you can use dried herbs. I have here salt and pepper. This is my salt blend that we used earlier. And then this is dry thyme. I prefer thyme because again it's an earthier flavor. Yeah. And you will literally just use this exact thing to marinate meat, salad, fish. Fish. Uh, you could do cold pasta salad. Okay. And put your vinaigrette on that. It's healthier than using a mayonnaise. Yeah. You can make a potato salad using new potatoes, which are the small little potatoes that have less starch, with a vinaigrette instead of adding mayonnaise. This is basically your go-to condiment. And That's you a can just keep it around. Food. Yeah. You can keep it in the fridge for a week, two awesome. weeks. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining pleasure. us. Um, if anyone wants to find out more information, check out Acasa Fox in the Lower East Side, and see you next week.